let's let's get started. So, what would you like coaching on today? Okay. So for the past few years, um, I feel like I've kind of been coasting through my life a bit, um, and that I've wasted a good amount of time. Um, you know, on many days, I've numbed out. Um, usually through for Netflix and trying to run and hide away from responsibility or things that I face um, and kind of been dealing with a lot of anxiety. Um, and I think or at the core of the lack of purpose or um, why, like, you know, why on this planet, what is my purpose? So I'd like to work, um, have some coaching to work through some of that stuff that it may um, help some of those other issues that are outside. Were you able to hear that? So could you tell me a little bit more just um, just again what it is that so it sounds like sorry? So if you could about the because it sounds in your life and it feels like finding your why and your purpose will really help. Um, but could you tell me a little bit about the issues again? Yeah, so um, more recently, kind of, uh, I've been, uh, so I've been numbing out a lot with food, um, and it's kind of blown up into an eating disorder, into a binge eating disorder, um, and I've been kind of like numbing out their food and kind of going way beyond, um, you know, what's a normal amount and well, way beyond things that are good for you, um, and, you know, and, and for the past few years, I feel like I've just been stumbling um, you know, and just like, and just kind of coasting it and not, and kind of running away from things, um, working at a job that I'm like, okay with, um, you know, I've always wanted, you know, I've never been in a relationship. Um, I strongly desire one, but I'm not taking any action to move in that direction. Um, and kind of dealing with a lot of anxiety, um, that I think is really, um, that sometimes just completely um, just makes it difficult for me to do anything. Um, so if that kind of helps. So it sounds like there's, there's a lot going on, right, with, with you. The, 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 you've talked about eating. You've talked about spending a lot of time on Netflix. You've talked about not having the relationship that you want. And does it sound like to you that um, – if you have your why, then all of these things will be resolved. I, I do kind of feel like it doesn't necessarily work out that way. Why I'm here or I'll have a, you know, a strong why and a reason. I think it would help. I think um, there's a lot kind of to, on. I feel like there's a lot to unravel. I think that's a piece, but that that's at, at its core, you know, I think of, you know, a lot of like the, the healthy eating strategies to try and get me away from the binge eating. And one of it is, is kind of just knowing what to eat, not to eat and having those, you know, bringing your own food into the office and all that stuff. Um, but the other piece of it is like a reason why, like why it, it's not because it's not good enough to know, oh, well, I know that if I eat terribly that I will increase my chance for chronic disease. Um, but maybe the fact that, well, I'm connected to, well, I want to have a family someday and maybe I want to be old enough and well enough to meet my grandkids, you know, potentially, um, or I want to, you know, be present for my girlfriend, you know, if, if that were to be the case. So, so I, I want to take a, a step back now, a little bit, one step back and, you've talked about a few different areas of your life. You've talked about eating. You've talked about relationships. You've talked about just, I guess, procrastination, not doing much. Sure. If if we could help you in one of those three areas or a different area, which one of those would be the most helpful to you? It would probably be with, um, I think it would be with, with anxiety, honestly, um, which I guess is appearing as, you know, at its core, maybe that is the core issue. Um, there's probably something underlying 
Um, but I think that's where kind of a lot of the craziness is happening and that's what's kind of causing a lot of, a lot of issues. So I think if we could maybe try and get to the root of the anxiety that that would help. And, and tell me how anxiety is showing up in your life. Um, so I deal with, um, it's, a, it's something called misophonia. Uh, it's kind of it's something that people have been dealing with for a long time, but uh, it, just the research is now coming out about it. I think it's like loosely defined as um, hatred of sound. And it's basically if you're sitting next to someone who's eating an apple or snacking on a bag of chips that you want to uh, either run through a wall or scream at the person or whatever, but it just kind of drives you insane. Um, so I've kind of noticed that I'm extremely sensitive to, to noise and have trouble sleeping because of that reason, um, you know, despite sleeping with like a noise machine, um, you know, anxiety kind of comes up at the office one maybe I'm bored or I'm kind of uncertain. And then, you know, I'll kind of try and numb it out with, with food uh, or at home, maybe with, with Netflix. Now, now I'm not, I'm not medically trained. I want to kind of have that caveat. Uh, I'm not a therapist or a psychologist. So I want to make that clear. And I don't really know much about your condition. So I, I don't want to, um, kind of suggest that this is medical advice or expertise. But it, it does sound like to me that a lot of what you're doing, like you just said, with your Netflix and with the with your reading, it sounds like it's a coping mechanism to deal with your anxiety. Would you say that's correct? Yeah. And And does your anxiety come up? Like, is it... Is it always the same? So, like, if someone's eating an apple, do you feel as anxious every time you have good days and, and not so good days? Good days and not so good days. And kind of, you know, there are days when, you know, like, I live in a city and, um, and for example, like, I, you know, the walls are – and I live in an apartment and um, – and the walls are super thin, so I just hear my neighbors going in and out all the time and the microwave going. And some days that really bother it doesn't. And then some days at the office, I'm kind of more calm around, you know, someone could be eating next to me and it's not. A, but another day I could be kind of just literally trying to run as far away as I can and hope that it that they finish their apple or, or whatever they're, they're doing. So why do you think that is? Why do you think that some days it's more of an issue and other days it's not? I think certain, sometimes it's a, it's a mindset. I, I know that I've gotten into this, you know, I was watching one of the earlier calls and I got into a mindset where I was like, person is driving me crazy. Is that, you know, watching something uh, that you did that, uh, that that's not possible that, you know, that, that only really, well, no one can make you feel a certain way that's like you. So sometimes it's just a, it, it's a thought that, oh, this person's driving me crazy. I can't stand them. They're the worst person in the world, but that's just not true. So sometimes it's having those thoughts, even though they're not true. And then sometimes it's recognizing, oh, that's just a thought. I'm able and kind of, I didn't, and continue on to like live my life. For the day so so would you say that one of the bigger issues that you're finding or one of the, the issues is the it's not the the anxiety around or the fact that you don't like people you don't like noise but is is the bigger issue here about that then once you get noise you start overthinking it and then that causes the anxiety yeah, I think that's true. I, I think that's when, you know, a, a trigger will happen, some kind of some kind of noise usually. Um, and then the thoughts start to come in and, and then they just kind of spiral out of control. Unless I'm able to kind of be present with them and non-judgmental, I guess, with them um, and, you know, and kind of allow them. But otherwise, they kind of really blow up um, a lot and kind of get out of control. Do, do you spend time, any time at all, even if I'm in, in absolute silence? Yeah. Um, a lot, I would say. 
when you spend time in absolute silence, sometimes you also feel anxious then. Yeah, I mean, I've tried, certainly like I, I've tried meditating. I've never been able to get up like a consistent practice with it. Um, I think, you know, one of the challenges with meditating are, is, you know, the thoughts come in and I know that the, you know, one good way to do it is just to accept that the, that the thoughts are just going to be there. And, you know, cause if we add more thoughts to the thoughts, then that's, that's when the overthinking happens. And, um, that's when I think you said like to, that's when you have more trucks. That's when you add more trucks on the highway that's already full of traffic. Um, so, um, there is some anxiety that happens there with, with thoughts. Why would you need to accept your thoughts? Because if I get my thoughts, then then I guess I'll be judgmental, and then I'll try and beat myself up. Um, Have you had like every time you've had a a negative? Like, let's just simplify it. Like. Every time you've had a negative thought, every time you've had some kind of anxious or whatever, have you had to accept it every time to move on? Like, is, has it, you're making it into a process? And I'm just, I'm just wondering if that's true. And have you had to go, right, okay, there's another one, I've got to accept that, and then I can move on. Or there's another one, I need to accept that, and then I move on. Or uh, some of them just pass through you. Some of them do pass through, yeah. I certainly don't um, go into kind of, every thought that way um you know uh some i i guess i've been to be less judgmental about my thoughts um and trying to be more accepting of myself but there are times when you know certainly that um kind of thoughts come in and i'll just kind of let them go or they'll or 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 or, or they'll or they'll just kind of sit and i'll you know, and also kind of be in denial about some of them. Um, and some of them may be or true. So what if you didn't need to do any of that? What if you didn't need to accept any of your thoughts? What if you didn't need to stop judging? What if you didn't need to do anything? That would probably be ideal. <laughs> um, now that I think about it, rather than having to worry about accepting it and kind of, cause sometimes if you like, when I try and practice self acceptance, it, it feels unnatural and it feels, um, it, it, it feels like I'm trying to do something that, I don't know, it, it just feels forced, I guess. Um, and then not having to accept, and maybe the idea of not having to accept it um, would be a little more freeing. <laughs> May I may I say what I see is going on with you? You may, yes. It it sounds like you you have a bunch of thinking, which is causing you to feel anxiety, and then you're looking for the right strategy and how to do, it, right? And you're jumping from one strategy to another, but each one of those strategies, it is more thinking, right? So like. Mm -hmm. You've heard me talk about adding thought to thought, and it's the the cars adding to to a traffic cars into a traffic jam. But that sounds like what you're doing. So you have a thought about being anxious, and you're like, "Oh, how can I change it?" You realize, "Oh, no, no, that's just more thinking. All I need to do is accept them." But acceptance is more thinking. And then you go, "Okay, I don't need to. Right, I just need to stop judging myself." But you do that from an intellectual point of view. And so, again, it's more thinking. And I'm not saying deny because actually denial. And I'm wondering if you've ever just let, let it go. I wonder if you've just genuinely stopped trying to fix this. I don't think I, I, don't think I have. Um, I think that's why I've kind of going down that overthinking over analyzing rabbit hole and you know and just continued and continued and you know i may have like a calm day or a calm week but always kind of come back to it 
Um, and, and it's true. I think it's absolutely true that, you know, I'm always just trying to find a strategy to, to fix it or to, to add more thoughts. And that's what it does. It just adds more confusion and, and chaos. And, you know, So are you willing to play with that? Are you willing to just play with not doing anything? Not not anything in the real world, but I mean anything on the level of your thinking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, even though you haven't done that right now, what could you imagine might happen if you stopped trying to fix your thinking and change your thinking and deal with your thinking and accept your thinking? that maybe it would, I don't know, I, I guess the optimistic point of view might be uh, that it would kind of fix itself, but it still feels kind of naive, I don't know. Um, but, I, but, but rather than, it certainly makes more sense than adding thoughts because they will, I, I feel like if, if I try, if I'm not worried about adding thoughts, then they'll just, I'm just kind of letting it go that they will naturally just calm themselves um so i think that could be i think that could be good do you, do you notice that you're a lot calmer right now than you were at the start of this call um a little bit um yeah i know i was pretty anxious at the start um but I do feel a little bit calmer. And, and I'm curious from the people that are in the room that are, that are signed up and, and watching this, I, I'd love to hear from yourself. So not, not just me, like, Hey, I'm the guy that, you know, coaching saying this, but use a chat function. And, and, and if you don't, then you, then you don't, but if you do, it'd be interesting to see if anyone else notices that. But I've seen a shift in you as we've been talking, as you suddenly, you don't need to do a whole lot of managing of your thinking. It felt like energetically, I felt that like something just kind of let go and, and a whole load of anxiety just dropped. And I, and I know it's not completely gone. I'm not that naive, but I felt like you, you really slowed down in that moment. And I was wondering if you noticed it yourself. Yeah, I, I I don't think I noticed that until you pointed it out. Um, I'm trying to kind of recall exactly where I was 25 minutes ago, um, you know, mentally. But I even but I like even recognize like my body language has shifted to be more open. And I know like so like 10 15 minutes very closed off. And how cool is that, right? Because I didn't do anything. We've not used any technique. We've not gone through a process of accepting you, judging yourself. Yeah, it's pretty cool um, yeah. to do that without without needing strategy, without needing to kind of go through some long process. Yeah, to be able to do it more naturally let the kind of quiet come naturally um, is kind of nice. So may, may I suggest why that's happened? May, would that be helpful to you to see why that's happened? Yeah. So I can, could potentially recreate it. Yeah. So, so what's happened is I've not given you a technique, but I've pointed out to you how your mind already works. Right. So you didn't realize what was really going on with your anxiety. And so you were looking for another strategy or a technique or something to do. And so at the start of this call, it looked like, well, if I get my why, then that will fix all of this. But as I've pointed out how your mind really does work, you realize, oh, there's nothing I need to do to manage my thinking. Then there's a shift happens automatically right so this is a denial letting go of things that don't work right 
or that are not necessary. Strategies that are unnecessary. And come from what I call um, a deep understanding. Deeper that you understand how your mind works, the deeper you can get into this feeling of calmness that you're in right now. And, you know, we can see some comments work. Someone else saying, I think Joshua has slowed down since the start. Someone else saying he does seem much calmer. You know, this, this is, these are not people I've planted in the webinar. This is kind of an open thing. Um, that would say exactly what they thought. So, um, someone else had just commented, it seems as if his face has got gotten softer. This is, this is real, real change of, you deepening your understanding of how your own mind works. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Um, I think it came. Yeah. When I think of, yeah, how I kind of view kind of my thoughts of how compared to now, um, it is a big difference. Um, it is kind of amazing that you know, this the change that we were kind of like able to work through, um, just through, through talking and just through changing kind of the way I, I view my own thoughts and how I how I approach them. So, would you like to carry on? Would you like to? Karen, deepening your understanding a little bit more, would you like to see a little bit more around this? Sure. So if, if I sent you an order after this call on Facebook message, which was all around dealing with stress, worry and anxiety but coming from this way that I coach is that something that you would commit to listen absolutely and secondly would you be willing to give um the group, would you be willing to come back once you've listened to your little post about what you got from, from listening to that? Yep, definitely. Great. I, I'm where well, you've, you have to leave in a few minutes and uh, you can't stay for the full hour. Um, so I'm just wondering, are we are we complete for now? Is has this been helpful to you? any other questions for me? Um, yeah, I, I think completely. This has been helpful. So thank you um, of, of even just being able to calm her half. That was a half an hour ago, but certainly have gained new insights and perspective. So uh, yeah, it's good. Well, well, thank you very much. So, so out to share that I be uh, other people who would get value from from watching this back. So, I, I really do uh, thank you for that. And we've got another comment: "Nice guy, lots of love to you." So, um, you're, you're you're getting lots thank of you, love Steve. on the, on the webinar tonight. <laughs> yeah, that feels good. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right, so uh, Sean, we have up next. Um, Sean, if you would be willing to switch on your your webcam and your mic. Can you hear me? Uh, I can, yes. Can you hear cool. us okay? Yeah. Am I too close to the camera? Uh, if you can move a little bit back, that might be helpful, but... It, uh, is this okay? There's a wall behind me. So, <laughs> Sean, uh, 
Sean, what would you like coaching on today? Um, I seem to be persistently uh, out of pocket in the nicest way. Um, I'm not saying I'm on the breadline. I'm saying I always seem to be like struggling for money. I travel a lot. Um, but I don't, I never see, no, I don't have any savings. Uh, just for reference for people that are watching, I'm 29. Um, yeah, I'd never seem to, like, if I get, like, um, a certain amount of money, I seem to spend it. Now, I don't waste it. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying I waste money, but I seem to spend it straight away. Um, I have some books or some coaching or some the next trip, which is all very uh, and I have this instead of you know, I'd rather spend it on things but when um, when I when I look at my bank account I think mm, maybe I should ease off sometimes and keep some money back I'm all like putting myself on the financially like I'll do the absolute bare minimum um, to live off kind of thing. Why do you think that is, Josh? Uh, why do you think that is? Um, I don't know. It's not it's definitely not for my parents because my parents save of like they're really parents who turn the heat off at like eight o'clock in winter to save half an hour and like that. Um, I come from my friends because my friends, I don't know, it's not my social circle, my family, um, and I don't, um, I don't have expensive clothes, I don't have a car, Instagram with all these expensive things, I don't know. Because I have, I came back from Australia and I had eight kilos of stuff in my backpack I was living with. I've come back with almost no. That is because I've spent um, around fifteen hundred pounds on a live event with the yeah, Um But it's, it's, it happens every. It seems to happen every year. Yeah, a certain amount of money, and I think I need to spend my coaching. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm getting some some lagging problems, and Sunny's saying this too. I'm 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 not sure if um on your end if you're I don't know if you can get any close or to uh to your internet connection, but uh, you seem to be dropping out a little bit. So I'm kind of catching a percent or seventy percent of what you're saying, but uh, it's 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 not it's not one hundred percent great at the moment. So is the problem that you don't have money or is the problem that you feel like you should have it? That I don't have it. That's the main issue. I've been in my overdraft since pretty much three years ago, since I left university. And do you have an income? Not, well, I've, I've only came back 10 days ago. I, I worked for four months in Australia, but now I'm back in the UK. I've only been back for 10 days, so I don't have an income at the moment. And I'm going traveling in two weeks again for three weeks. So income is a big, big problem. Right. So it sounds like you're aware of of uh, your kind of financial situation. Um, yeah, acutely aware. Like it's, it doesn't make sense to me how. I don't mind saying I'm intelligent. I'm happy to say that I'm a, I'm an intelligent person, and it just there's a blockage. So there's not a blockage, but there's something somewhere which is like I can't have a standing amount of money. Like I can't just let it. I can't just have a thousand pound in my bank account. I, it can't stay so, there. It's like I have no, to buy books let's, or something. Let's say, let's say I put a thousand pounds in your bank account right now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Why can't that stay there? Because I'd feel like if it was staying there and I wasn't buying a 
book or something to improve my life, I feel that I was wasting my time. Or wasting, sorry, not wasting my time, wasting time. Is that true? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah you're saying it's, are you saying it's that true? Is it true that you leave a £1,000 your bank account, then you're wasting time? Is that true? If I'm not spending it, yes. So to you, it seems absolutely true that if you have money in your bank account that you're not spending on personal development, yeah, then it's a waste. Yeah, and I, I include traveling in personal development. Okay. Yeah. So, so let me get this straight because I'm getting. I'm a, I don't know if anyone else is confused, but I'm a little confused here. You have a strong belief that on one hand, if you have money, the best thing to spend it on personal development is that correct? Yeah. What you do is when you have money in your bank account, you end up spending it on the thing that you think is the best thing you can do with it. Yeah. So what's the issue? Because when I spend it, then I've got nothing left to sort of live on. Like I can't go out with friends and stuff and I can't buy any clothes that I would want to buy, um, that kind of thing. But hold on a second. You just told me the best thing you can do with the money Mm. spend it on personal development yeah so with your money you spend it on personal development why is it a problem that you don't have money to spend on clothes or going out with your friends because the personal development is like one side of life it's not my whole life it's just something I like spending money on but obviously I need money for other things the so called like the so called not the I don't know how to put this into words like um like for example if I if my parents said to me today okay you need to go and find your own place I wouldn't have the money to go and find my own place because I spent all this money on personal development. Well, it sounds like two conflicting thoughts in your head. On one side, you've got a really strong belief that spending money on personal development is the best thing that you can do. Mm. So no surprise that's how you act because you think yeah. it's the best thing you can do. It's very logical. Like you said, you're an intelligent person. But then you turn around and say, oh, but that's not a good thing because I need money for other things. So no, those two things don't add up to me. Yeah, I'm, I guess right? I'm kind of saying I don't have my independence because like, if it wasn't for my parents, I wouldn't have anywhere to live. Right. So the question is, would you like to have independence from your parents? Yes. Okay. What would give you parents? Sorry, what would I what? What would give you independence from your parents? If I could move out and have my own. Pl I mean, I, I only live at home when I'm in between trips, traveling. I mean, I've lived in France for the last two and a half years and I've come home every now and then. Um, but now that I gave up my apartment abroad. My only place I can live is at home, and I, I just don't feel right here. So what I would like would be to have that independence, which the money would give me, because I could afford to go and get my own place somewhere else. So the, the, um, what gives you the feeling of independence? not having to rely on someone when I really need something. Like, for example, I was That's stuck true. in... Well, I'll just give you a quick example. Like, I was in Australia and my bank card didn't work and I didn't have any backup funds to get myself home. And I had to ask my parents for, I don't know, nearly £900, which, like, I'm paying for now in arguments and stuff like that. And I just don't want it. I can't do anything with it anymore. Because I spent, because I put myself in that position, because I spent so much on the Amirati experience that's coming up, that I didn't leave myself any backup funds to have that independence. Where, when the shit hits the fan, that I don't need to ask someone for help. That's what I didn't like. What's wrong with asking someone, especially your parents, for help? Just because um, they like they use it against me, and I don't want that. Is that true? How do they use it against you? Like, for example, they will say, um, 
I could give you so many examples, but just off the top of my head, like now they're saying, like it's just like emotional kind of stuff. It's like why, where would you be if if, um, if we hadn't given you that money? And I don't have an answer because I don't have an income. Um, and they're saying, do they have a point? Yeah, they do have a point because I would not have been able to get home without their help. Right. Which to me and you, it might sound like a reasonable thing for your parents to to give you money to fly home. But it doesn't work like that in my house. Well, well, here's the thing. I haven't taken money of my parents for a long time, <clears throat> uh, apart from apart from my wedding, which they they very generously paid for. But that here, here's the thing, Sean. You, your beliefs, your ideas, and your thoughts are running your life right now, and they're giving you the results in your life that you have. Now, I'm not saying live off your parents. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just trying to challenge some of your beliefs, right? Now, it's it sounds like, and, and there's some parents on, on this call, it's very natural for parents wanting to help out. They're natural for parents wanting the best for their children. So I don't think the issue is that you you um, have asked for support from your parents, right? But that feel of independence doesn't come from how much money you've got in the bank. The feeling of independence doesn't come from whether you have to ask someone for support or help. That feeling of independence is, is made up in your head because one person who had your lifestyle, right, who was traveling all around the world, and doing whatever could feel really, really, really in. They've got no mortgage. They've got no fixed job. They can do whatever they want. They'll have an enormous sense of freedom, right? Doing personal development courses, right? And and yet, and I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying how different people can view the same circumstances differently. Someone like yourself is saying, well, I don't feel independent given the same set of circumstances. Yeah, something's just clicked in my head. The thing is, <clears throat> I can't explain this to my parents, though. I just think the best I, the best solution for me is if I have my own money and I have my own income, uh, like a regular income, even though I travel a lot, and to just take myself out of the situation where I don't need any support off them at all. So my idea, obviously, is how can I get out of this cycle of asking my parents for five, six hundred pounds every eight, nine months? And I'm thinking, okay, the best way here is to have my own money and my own independence. And also, I would like to invest money, which I had previously, but I've had to sell it because I'm so short of money at the moment. Um, so do you know how to get yourself a regular income? Yeah, uh, yeah. when I was in Australia, I found a job. Like I just knew what to do. I don't know how, but I've the only period in my life where I've been out of work... Um, is if I've had a contract and the contract's finished and I've been looking for a new job in the meantime. Otherwise, like, I've never found it very difficult to be, out of, um, to be, no, I've never found it difficult to find work. That's in Spain, in France, abroad, UK. Like, it's not, um, I've, I've never felt like, oh my God, I'm unemployable. Like, in fact, the opposite. Like, I know I have a lot of skills. Um and I don't know if me traveling is a, is a way of like avoiding the fact I don't have a career. Um, Cause my, my, just for reference, my degree is in geography and geology, which I could work in. But for some reason, I don't feel like I'm, I didn't get very good grades. I don't feel good enough to work in that domain, which is obviously nonsense. It's just a self-talk, but that's a, a thought that I have regularly like, do I travel to avoid the fact that I don't feel good enough to work in the domain of my degree? Well, only you can answer that. Yeah, I think there's a bit of truth in that. Um, Yeah, I think, I think there is a bit of truth in that, but um, I don't know. Maybe it's because I, 
uh, if I took a job in there, I would feel like I was just fulfilling a duty of um, like a societal duty, like getting a job in my degree domain or something like that, or maybe <laughs> excuse me, trying to please my parents who are asking all the time, you know, when you're going to get the quote unquote serious job kind of thing. Well, forget what your parents think, Sean. What do you want? <laughs> but this is what I go back to about living under their roof. Like, I have to deal with it all the time, which is why I want the independence to not live around and have these questions constantly. But so I'm, I'm going to be a little bit firm with you, Sean. You, you turn around and you say, well, I don't want this from my parents. I don't want that. I want to be independent. You, you then say you will get your independence from having your own income. And you know how to get your own income. So why don't you just go and get your own income? And whether that's and whether that's a permanent job in the career that you've studied in, or whether it's something else. But why don't you just go and do that? No, I, this is it. I do do that. I mean, I've lived abroad for the last pretty much three years. It's just that when I, it's hard for me to keep going that way. Is what I'm trying to say. I don't. I have to keep coming home. Um, I don't have to keep my own. But sorry. But why do you need to, I don't understand, why do you need to keep coming home? Why do I, when my job's finished, for example, or my apartment sale or something like that. Right. So you, you don't need to answer this. This is being recorded and, and this will be available publicly, right? But <clears throat> let's say you're earning X amount of money, right? And I, I don't know how much you're earning, but you're earning X amount of money when you do have these contracts, when you do get an income and you ha and you earn X amount of money, um, is there a is there a sum of money that is left over? So like your basic bills, your your food, your um, your your rent or whatever, is there some amount of money left over from that? Yeah, of course. I have a spreadsheet actually of all my expenses. I could tell you what I've spent for the last nine months to the to the dollar. Right. So. You say you're an intelligent person, but is it as simple as saying, okay, every month I'm going to take £200 out of my current account and transfer it into my saving account? And if you don't trust yourself putting it into a saving account that you don't have access, you know, you can get accounts where you can only access them once a year, for example. Yeah, I had, I did have one actually. Um... Uh, I can't remember why I emptied it, but it, it got emptied. I think when I went to Australia, I emptied it because I needed some money. Um, but then again, that just says to me that it's the old situation of when I have a pot of money, I just spend it. And I find it incredibly well, difficult to just leave it. Well, Sean, you say you're an, you, you say you're an intelligent person, right? But you're acting like you have no choice about the money that you spend. And, and I'm sorry, but that's complete bullshit, right? No one's forcing you to go and spend money on a personal development course. No one's forcing you to spend money on flights. No one's forcing you to do anything with the money. You have a choice. And and right now you're saying, well, I, you know, I'm doing this, but then the money gets spent. Oh, I don't know what I spent. It gets spent. It gets spent. No, you spend it. You have that choice. And you've got some, you've got some fairly um, blunt answers on the on the chat on the side. You know, someone saying he's running away from the truth, but Sosa saying traveling when you can't afford to do so may not that intelligent. Don't say that someone else has said it, but but they've they've got a point. You know, if if you're an intelligent guy like you say, and you know. It's, you're looking for an answer like there must be something wrong in my personality, right? I must have a personality flaw which is stopping me from spending the money. That's just you looking for an excuse as to why you're doing something which is causing you to have no money. But what's causing you to have no money is really, really simple. It's you spending more money than you have. It's, it's nothing more complicated than that. Now, are you willing to, to own yeah, I mean, I understand that. Like, of course, I understand that. That's what I do. Um, but again, it still comes back to like what I said at the start that if I, like, I, 
um, I, I always feel like if I'm not doing something with the money, I'm wasting time. Now, that's a quite. I, I'm not. I think that's quite a hard thing to get to get over. Like, how do I tell myself that if I'm not, um, like, how do I convince myself that it's okay? to have money and not travel and not do any personal development. How do I convince myself that it's not a waste of time? Well, it sounds like the biggest waste of time that it is you spending all the money that you've got, right? Like I've, I've spent <laughs> a lot of personal development in the last few years. I've spent over 75,000 pounds probably in the last four years alone on personal development and yet I don't spend every single penny that I have. I do this for a living. I could spend the amounts of money on personal growth, but I don't choose to spend all of it because that wouldn't make sense. That would actually slow me down. Just like it's slowing you down. You think that it's going to slow you down if you don't spend all of your money. But do you not see how it's clearly slowing you down right now? Yeah, I can see that now. You spending all your money and then relying on your parents, that's you still acting like a child. This is, you know, if you if you want to grow up, if if you want to really move forward in terms of being an independent man, and, and I'm being quite, quite, quite tough with you, but I, I'm doing it from a, a loving place because I really want you to, to be helped is making sure that you can manage your finances, which means that if you don't do a personal development course right now, but you might have to wait six months or a year, the courses will all still be there. And it means that you're managing it, your, your money better so that you, you, um, you are able to do those things. And, uh, someone's commented right now, personal development could mean balancing your money. And it sounds like that to me. It sounds like that's a real area for growth for you is is balancing the books, um, making sure you've got cash, making sure you've got a surplus um, to one side. And, it, and it's really, really basic stuff. And for someone, like you said, who's an intelligent person, there's no intellectual reason why you can't do that. But what you're not doing is not owning that and, and realizing you have a choice around it. There's, there's no but around this. You've got the perfect system right now for holding your personal development back, right? Which is overspending and then having no money and having to rely on your parents. Yeah, I think I just go too much on feeling and impulse. <laughs> like, I see... A cheap fine. I find it very hard to like hold myself back. I'm like, oh, if I, yeah, it's like what you said about 30 seconds ago, like the courses are always there. And I think I always think like, oh, if, I, if I don't do it now, then like, oh, I'm going to be wasting six months by waiting until, I don't know, uh, March next year or something like that. It, it, it sounds like you're a child who has access to the kitchen and it's like, let me eat all of the sugary foods right now because I don't know when I'll get access to them again. And so you're eating, eating, eating until you make yourself sick. And it's the same thing with personal development. You're consuming personal development at such a speed, which you can't afford, that it's making you financially unwell. but they'll always be there and you do have a choice and acting like you don't have a choice is, is just not true. That that's you kidding yourself. You, you absolutely have a choice around this 100%. You know, personal development and, and I'm a coach, I do this for a living. But if, if I had someone like yourself coming to me as a client, I'd either not coach you or I'd only coach you around uh, increasing your bank balance by making better choices.
you know, personal development isn't isn't the answer for your growth right now, right? That personal development call that's all supporting can support you in your in your life, but it's not your. Hello. Yeah. I thought I, I mean, you just went off a bit there. Um, yeah, someone's put, I don't really understand it. Someone said personal development is a get out of jail card for running away from responsibility. I don't know what responsibility this guy's referring to, but. <clears throat> Well, the way I, I look at it, it's personal responsibility around your finances, right? It's like you've got money in your bank account and you want to be independent. You want to be a man. But then when a personal development course comes along, it's like, oh, but that's going to help me grow. So you spend it. And it's like it's like your cocaine. That's so true. that's your – it's like, oh, well, it's personal development. Therefore, I can spend it there. It's the same as a child going, well, that's chocolate. And what you're not realizing is it's making you unwell. It's not, it's not helping you grow as a human being. It's not helping you grow as a man. Yeah, And, and you, I believe you realize this because that's why you've asked for coaching around it. And, and again, I'm, I'm being tough with you, but at the same time, I want to commend you for at least being open to it. I know, I know sometimes it can be tough to be coached. Yeah, that's true. You know, like I, I kind of feel like, oh, I've got no money, but it's okay because it was on personal development and not on a Armani suit. But the result's still the same, I guess, no money. Yeah. Yeah, that's true, actually. I never thought about it in that way before. Like, it doesn't matter what I spend it on if, you know, no dollars is no dollars, so to say, or pounds, whatever. Yeah, I, I, I had a client once who, who paid for my coaching via PayPal and he put it on his credit card. I didn't realize. Um, I, I didn't realize that he'd put it on his credit card and I told him after I found out after we'd completed the course if I'd known he was going to put it on his credit card I wouldn't have taken him on as a client and actually what what he needed coaching around or what he needed support on was actually managing his finances better and I didn't want to support that that behavior of of being constantly broke because that's not helpful for the client yeah, I mean, I think you've hit the nail on the head there, basically. I think pretty much got it spot on that just because I spend it on personal development doesn't matter what I spend it on because I still don't have any money, regardless of whether it's good for my... Well, I can see now how it's probably not good for my growth because it's been, I'm spending too much time thinking about it that I could be doing other things with. Normally, I'd, I'd spend a lot of this because because obviously it's quite a deep subject for you, Sean. But I want to also respect the time that that we have for this, so we're kind of up on that. But has that been helpful for you today? To yeah, to at I least see the, yeah, the blind spot I think is right there where I'm giving myself like too much leeway. I'm being too nice in myself because I'm like, okay, I'm spending it on personal development. It's okay, but it's not okay. I'm kind of having my, trying to have my cake and eat it. Like I want my personal development and my independence, but I have to give up one to get the other. And, and, I, and I've recommended a book to you, haven't I, about money? Yeah. Um, it's, it's, is that some It didn't purchase? come today. It said um, two to three days on Saturday. So it didn't come today. It should come tomorrow. Great. Would you be willing to, to read that book? And again, like I said to Josh, what, once you've read it, for, for him it was listening to an audio, but once you've read the book, would you be the group and share yeah. some of your insights reading that? 
Yeah, of course. I mean, this has been incredibly helpful. Like it's, it's, it sounds simple to you guys, but it wasn't simple to me about where the big blind spot was, but it's very clear now. So, so thank you. I really, I do, I do mean it. Thank you for, for being willing to be and, and really being open to hearing what, what not only what I've said, but some of the other people have said on the group. Mm, yeah, um, I've read the comments. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, really, really appreciate that. I hope this has been useful for not only yourself, but but Josh, who's had to leave, and and also for everyone else that's listening, and and also for everyone that's going to listen to this on the replay. Um, I'll be back again doing one of these next month, and uh, I look forward to hearing from from you, um, and uh, and and how things unfold for you in the coming weeks and months ahead. Yeah, thank you very much for your time, and everybody's coming. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, Nils. <laughs> Thank you.